Are we on? Good evening uh, and welcome to uh, yet another live stream. Uh, this is starting to become uh, a bit of a habit um, and we are live hopefully and all going very well. Uh, just let me know if it isn't if, if there's anything wrong but we should all be fine with the settings are all the same uh, and we did a test run earlier all went well so um good evening to everybody thanks for all turning up on this uh, Sunday day Sunday evening um, uh, to talk about taxes uh, apologies for my uh, terrible um, video earlier <laughs> it just had to be done um, because uh, I do love you uh, they are one of my favourite species for a lot of di uh, different reasons uh, and we're going to uh, look at that um, in a bit more detail. There's a fly buzzing around, it's really irritating me. Um, so if you see me swatting around like that then uh, that's why. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we're going to look at taxes uh, in, in uh, what we sort of d do with them at this time of year. Um, and um, in particular kind of uh, dealing with the, uh, the, the, the spring growth. Uh, the you know the the buds are start opening up and starting to extend out now, um, and just sort of look at whether or not we pinch them. Uh, there you go. You can see the little bugger fly across the screen there. Um, see if we pinch them or not. Uh, if we let them grow, what we do with them? Um, because a lot of people kind of mismanage uh, taxes, um, sort of pinching them when they should be letting them grow, or um, letting them grow when they should be pinching. Uh, and this is sort of two definite sort of stages of development and, and how we deal with um, taxes. <laughs> the, the two flies are trying to have sex with each other by the looks of it. Um, uh, and uh, you kind of got to sort of understand what's uh, appropriate for, 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 the, for that sort of time of the year, uh, for, for that sort of stage of development um, and things like that. And so taxes are a species that are quite slow growing really, um, unless you push them, push them, push them. Um, in the wild, they are they're, they're naturally kind of uh, a, you know a, a relatively sort of slow growing species, um, because they grow in some quite uh, harsh environments, um, and so they kind of uh, they, they keep a lot in reserve and they they don't um, expend all of their energy. Uh, one of the things that you may have uh, noticed. Um, if you had a particularly bad cold spell now is that the, the you know the, the soft tender uh, shoots can get a little bit damaged by the by the frost um, and if you've ever seen them growing in the wild for example uh, you will know that they uh, get eaten quite um, quite regularly by by sheep and such like which is uh, one of the, um, the the main kind of creators of a lot of the Yamadori material that we have um, particularly in the UK um, so they, 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 tend, they tend to sort of uh, grow relatively slowly um, unless you sort of push them uh, as bonsai. Uh, so understanding that is a, is a kind of like an important part of, of, of developing them. Uh, there are two species that we use um, for, for bonsai. Uh, there's the Taxus baccata, which is the European yew, uh, which is found all across Europe. Um, and some of the, the, the best um, sort of collected specimens uh, can be found in Spain. Um, there were some to be collected in the UK, but we lack the same type of uh, harsh mountainous environment that, um, that, that Spain has. Uh, it is uh, has become um, illegal to collect uh, um, taxes from the wild in, in the majority of places. Uh, and so the, the material is very scarce and uh, quite highly um, sought after. And uh, collecting on sort of private land uh, and such like in, in certain situations is, is perfectly uh, fine and legal but um, there's yeah there has been uh, a sort of clamp down particularly on the taxes in, in Spain um, because uh, some of the better trees were kind of like in national parks and such like um, all of the trees that, that we work with here have all been kind of like collected legally and and uh, through uh, the correct channels and things like that um, so uh, some of the trees that we'll see uh, sort of today um, are, will perhaps be uh, a little bit more kind of um, sort of a, perhaps a higher level than some of the material we've looked at in previous streams and things like that. Um, and but the, the the techniques are pretty much or the, the concepts are pretty much the same for you know trees that you can sort of see here uh, and sort of very sort of basic starter material type things. 
Okay, so taxis is one of those uh, trees that you can kind of pick up from garden centres. Uh, it's used as hedging material and things like that. Um, and you can dig them out of the garden. Um, and you, there's a variety of kind of sources for, for material. Um, and some of it can be relatively um, inexpensive uh, and easy to kind of get hold of. Uh, but the techniques are pretty much the same, be it, you know, that kind of starter material, some of the, the, the sort of the more uh, crazy looking Yamadori pieces that you'll see. Um, so don't be kind of like put off by the, the, the you know, the, the nicer trees. Um, principles are the same. The thought processes are the same as well. So, you know, when we've said about the, the kind of like the reverse situation um, with, uh, you know, looking at sort of more basic pieces of material, you know, the, the principles are the same for those as it is for um, the uh, more material more mature, more expensive, more well-refined trees and stuff like that. So, uh, taxes are a very kind of robust uh, species for, for growing in the UK. Um, they're very, they're ideally suited to, to the UK climate. Um, and uh, for a lot of kind of like Northern European uh, sort of climates, um, because they are very sort of shade tolerant um, and they will grow quite happily, not, not vigorously, but they'll grow happily uh, in shaded environments. Uh, that's not to say that you need to put them in shade. Um, you know, I'm tolerant of the shade, but I prefer to be in the sun every now and again. Um, I'm tolerant of the cold, but I do prefer uh, sitting in front of a fire. Um, and so, in my garden, I will do like a tour of it at some point um, in the future. But in, in in the garden, I there are certain trees, certain of the taxus which thrive. Um, in absolutely full sun, even kind of like exposed root type uh, rock plantings, they'll thrive in, in, in full sun. Um, but equally, the, there's, there's a few of them that I put in into the shade because I know that they will do okay there. Uh, and so, they're, you know, they, they, they'll, they'll grow in a variety of, of um, environments. And they just seem to, they, no matter what you sort of do with them uh, in the UK, they just grow very, very sort of vigorously and you can get some really quick development uh, on them, which sort of comparing them to, to say junipers um, or, or pines, I think the the, the taxes do definitely develop a lot quicker than any any other species that we we sort of tend to work with. So uh, it's a great species to work with, I'd say. Uh, they respond very well to to sort of fertilising uh, and pushing them, as we'll see uh, if we can get our special guest on the line later. Um, the other variety that we would tend to use is the cuspidata, which is the Japanese uh, yew, and obviously they'll all be sort of imported. Uh, and so we'll just have a look at one of those, just so you can sort of see the difference between the two. There's not a huge amount of um, uh, sort of difference between uh, the two um, sort of species in, in a lot of senses. Uh, both of them are, as I say, sort of shade tolerant. Um, both of them um, are relatively drought um, uh, tolerant as well. Uh, although they do pr prefer to be kind of like well watered, um, neither of them like to be waterlogged, and so they're obviously being in a in a, in a good kind of uh, bonsai soil mix where we can you know, control that moisture and oxygen level is good. Uh, but both of them are relatively kind of like drought tolerant uh, and heat tolerant as long as we've um, ma uh, managed to maintain the foliage correctly. Um, so let's have a look at. Uh, why is this in the wrong shape? I will go to that. Uh, sorry, I just need to skip back to the to the start of this. Sorry, I should have gone the other way. Now you've seen all the pictures in advance. Right, this is a uh, a taxus cuspidata that um, uh, came into the country this year. Uh, this is a tree that I purchased in Japan last year. It was imported. Uh, it came to me. Um, this year and uh, it was repotted as you can sort of perhaps uh, see um, okay uh, very low everybody's I've put the sound up sorry okay the sound is up as, as, mu as much as it can be All right, I should have, uh, how's it doing now?
Okay. Uh, when I was checking before, it was fine. So, uh, don't know. Where... Right. Okay. Anyway, um, the uh, where are we? Sorry. Okay. All uh, right. So yeah, this this taxus was imported into the um, into the as I said into the into the UK this year. Um, uh, this was it before it got worked onto. So the both both sides were possible as as the front. <laughs> okay. Uh, and um, uh, it got repotted uh, into into this uh, slightly smaller, slightly more uh, appropriate. Um, Okay, uh, I don't know why the sound is down. I have it up at full um, volume and the speaker's closer to me. The, the, the microphone's close to me. Okay, uh, so yeah, it got planted at this, this position um, it, just over a month ago, a month and a half ago. Um, and uh, at the time it was, um, just we'll skip through those. Uh, there's just a few other pictures of it there. Uh, at the time, you could see there's some some close-ups of the of the branches here. Uh, the uh, there was a lot of buds, a lot of adventitious buds formation uh, formed on there. Uh, so that was one of the reasons. That was one of the the, the reasons why I felt like I could um, I could repot it immediately after importation. Normally, uh, after importing trees, you would kind of want to just let them see them uh, just just grow normally. Uh, for a year and just sort of see how they respond uh, but I know I've known this tree for a couple of years I saw it at uh, uh, the exporters nursery um, and I'd seen it improve over you know the, the health improve over a couple of years saw all of this adventitious buds for, forming on the inside and um, I sort of thought okay it's, it, I'll go ahead with it and it was quite a severe repot uh, but we managed to, to, to get it in there uh, this is the tree now. It's just been uh, got taken out outside um, uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, and it's been growing really, really well. Uh, it responded very well to the to, to the repot and the large um, uh, kind of like pruning back that it was given. Um, so this is some of the growth now. So it's really pushed out uh, very, very well, uh, and you can see the, the the sort of the characteristics of the cuspidata is. Um, that kind of very uh, lighter green, sort of lime green foliage, and the uh, the needles on it tend to be a little bit sort of plumper, rounder, um, and a little bit softer than the cusp uh, than the piccata, which we'll sort of see here. So this is the the taxus piccata, the the European uh, taxus. So you can see the 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 foliage on it, the needles as it were, the leaves are a little bit more pointed, uh, a little bit sort of a darker green than the uh, the, than the cuspidata. Okay. Uh, there's the two of them sort of together. Okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, that this tree has done, um, and taxus will do, uh, will tend to do, um, uh, they will sort of start to to sort of shed their some of their older foliage, um, and uh, particularly. Um, when they've been stressed and things like that so uh we've got a lot of kind of um dandruff <laughs> a lot of the old foliage just kind of like dropping off at the moment which isn't a huge issue um because we've got such uh, an incredible amount of uh luscious green light green uh new foliage coming through okay so there's a lot of manky old foliage in there which is the the, the tree shedding in favor of this uh lovely youthful um lime green stuff coming through there okay right so uh, that's the difference between uh, cuspidata and uh, baccata in terms of the foliage kind of like uh, character. Um, you know, uh, how we sort of cultivate them in the UK uh, and in sort of northern climates is uh, I would pretty much treat them the same in terms of um, kind of uh, cultivation and things like that, except for being perhaps... A, a little bit less aggressive with the cuspidata. I know that with the, the baccatas, you can cut them back very, very aggressively. Um, and you, if the tree is healthy, that is, uh, and, and growing really, really well. Uh, whereas the cuspidatas do tend to, to, to require a little bit less 
I require a little bit kind of less aggressive uh, approaches and things like that. So I'd always be looking to make sure I kept maybe 25, 35% more foliage, more growth tips on uh, as compared to uh, the Bacata. But other than that, pretty much uh, sort of just treat them the same. Okay. Uh, we have two uh, large sort of cuspidatas here now. Um, uh, and the majority are the um, uh, Bacatas that we have here. So. Uh, I will answer the questions um, uh, when we start watching some videos and things like that. Um, so just just sort of bear with me uh, on those questions. Okay, right. So as I sort of said before, really, uh, be it uh, Bacata or Cuspidata, either of the taxes, um, one of the most important things to, to, to learn about dealing with is, is how we sort of deal with this, this, this foliage uh, and the growth. And as I said, there's, there's basically sort of two... Uh, ways of, um, sort of dealing with them uh, there is the kind of like as you're either going to be looking at growing it out or cutting it back uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk to somebody now um, and uh, hopefully get him on the line uh, and go through some of the, um, the techniques that uh, is used there uh, asking Duncan is he here yes Okay, hello, just a sec, let me just get you online. Okay, there we go. Boom, there we are. You are now live on, sorry, oh, 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 there oh, we go. Oh. <laughs> Told you just do it. <laughs> bit, bit late there. Uh, so yes, welcome Duncan to uh, Sorry I'm Alive. Um, and do you just want to tell us a little bit about yourself for those of you who don't know Duncan? Hello, yeah, hi bonsai. everybody. So uh, I'm a bonsai enthusiast, live in the UK, um, probably about two and a half hours north of London. Um, so I've known Peter for, I don't know, how many years now, for a while, but I've been working with Peter since about 2012, um, learned lots of good stuff. Um, and I've got to say, I've made loads, loads of mistakes all the way through my bonsai journey. So, uh, you know, kind of learned, learned, learned lots of good stuff, but made loads of mistakes as well. Uh, Duncan's one of the most uh, masochistic people I know in bonsai. <laughs> <laughs> he has uh, he, he's gone through the ringer quite a few times uh, with it so yeah definitely I've made plenty of mistakes if there's ever going to be a live stream about bonsai mistakes I'll be there first first up yeah well we'll all we'll be <laughs> um, okay so but one of the things that um, uh, I sort of really respect um, about Duncan is his ability to, to, to grow with taxes and things like that so uh, what we're going to do is just go through a few of um, uh, Duncan's trees and Duncan's techniques. Uh, he's got he's prepared some pictures and uh, a little slideshow for us. So, uh, can we do that, Duncan? Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, that's okay. You see my screen? Uh, do, 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 just a second. Uh, have you got the. Uh, just a second. Have you. Uh, what, pa what page is it on? Sorry. Uh, we'll just try that. So it should be on. Let me go. Just give that a go. So that should come through, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Perfect. Uh, right. Off you go. Great stuff. No, that's good. So, so I'm a massive fan of, of taxes. Um, as, as Peter was saying, one of the kind of th key things I like is it's very robust. It grows really well in the UK, and I've had a lot of good kind of results with that. Trying different techniques, but um, Peter asked me just to share um, a kind of key technique I use. I think it's, it's called Makiri technique, and it's around summer pruning. So I just wanted to share with you some of the things I've done here. One of the things I'll say up front: my photography is not great. These are not professional photos. It's just done on the phone but um, as I say, I'm a self-confessed taxes super fan so I've got about half of my collection is is kind of made up of taxes now so I kind of got half of my benches with with taxes on them and you know I grow them from raw material from from garden center stock right the way through to kind of more refined images of trees which I'm getting to now so I'm working on techniques to kind of help me get me to that point and Peter's been a massive help with that as well so lots lots of different material made lots of mistakes but learned lots of good stuff and kind of over the last few years really developed Developed this technique um, called Makiri. So I was always interested and kind of big fan of the Spanish and Italian artists and the taxes that they have grown there and always really admired the kind of density and uh, the foliage kind of quality as well. So I kind of did some research and looked into that. But the Makiri technique um, that I kind of follow now really, it's really good for building ramification and density and, and back budding on taxes because 
one of the things I've learned really is about kind of objective led uh, development of trees and what do I want to achieve. And, and one of the big things was to develop the taxis so I could get that density and those, those foliage pads really well. But I've got to say caveats, rule number one, get the tree really healthy and growing well. Do not try this technique if it's uh, any weakness on there or you just want to direct the strength to another part of the tree and feed your trees well. Um, big organic fan, so lots of organic fertilizer, seaweed products have, have worked really well for taxis and they respond really well to it. So I kind of distilled down into the kind of the three key steps that I follow. Uh, and I'm sure many, many people do the same stuff, but this, this is work for me. And I'll show you what I do, how I go through it, and then some of the results I've had with the trees. So what I try and do towards end of autumn, early uh, winter is just to kind of clean out some of those old needles. Um, if I've got really strong growth on there, I'll do some pruning back, perhaps to two buds on each of the main and secondary areas of the tree. But if it's weak, I'll leave it alone. And then what I do starting really early March, end of Feb, early March, is start to get that organic feed into the tree. Um, I try and keep my trees under cover, keep them cold, but keep them under cover, but try and get that feed in there, some fish emulsion, uh, for, you know, kind of organic fertilizers and seaweed stuff and get that in there. And then what I try and do is let the trees grow as much as they can, grow gangbusters as much as they can, get as much growth on them. And I don't touch them, those I want to develop until well into June. And what I'll notice is the trees will come out, particularly if they're out and it's sunny, like it's been the last kind of couple of months or so, that the foliage will come out quite golden. And then what happens during kind of May time, end of May into June, that foliage starts to change colour into a darker green. And that's when I kind of get in there with the old scissors. And um, on the strong areas, what I try and do is prune back those really strong areas, so about two to three pairs of needles. If, if an area is weak or... Um, I want some more thickness or to try and elongate the design, for example, I just leave it alone. But when I've got the tree growing really strong, I get in there and prune back. And, and what happens over the kind of coming month or so, you should see lots of back budding on the trees and growth coming through there. Now, it's not always as vigorous as the spring growth, but it's useful. And you can then get that density and start to style the trees later in the year. So just going to show you some of the examples of the trees I've done. Again, photographs are just done by myself on my phone as I was going through the garden. So... This was uh, one tree raw material, just developed, no, not been designed or styled or anything, but it would establish to be really, really kind of growing well. So clean the needles out and you'll see the bare branches. It looks looks a bit odd. The tree was long kind of arms, octopus style arms of these these branches with just foliage at the end. So, so let the tree grow really well and then prune back. Um, and this was last year, so the 20th of June, 2019. It's interesting to look at the dates really on the, from the next slide. So this was 20th of June last year, been feeling really well, cut it back hard. And I just took the photographs just to see what would happen in between. So a month later, um, hopefully you can see that. So this is 21st of July, a month later, all along those bare branches, the buds are popping out. Um, and I just carried the growth on, pushed it back. This was one of the, the stronger trees. So you can see their buds popping back. I did some selective kind of selection of, of the buds, um, the, the actual new buds coming through, and I just let it grow all the way through and did an initial basic styling. The growth was that good for the rest of the year. I could actually do an initial styling uh, in autumn of, of, of last year, really. So this is the tree, that tree now. So you can see lots of growth. I did the main kind of bones of the tree just to place in the main branches, cleaned out those old needles again. So this was um, a couple of days ago, really, on the bench, just grown really well, lots of strong growth coming in. You can see the foliage is lighter color than the, the older foliage. And then later in June, I'll get in there and, uh, and cut those back. That's what I'll be doing on that. So just to show as well, some of the trees I've got don't always have that strong growth. So this is just a, a smaller tree, just developing on really from raw material. So it's growing and the growth's coming out, but because it's not really super strong, I won't be doing the McKiri technique on that. I'll just let that grow, perhaps later in the year or later in the summer, depending on the growth, actually do some pruning just to try and direct the strength to perhaps some of those lower branches. But really for that tree, I'll just let it grow, get the strength up and then start the technique next year. Again, these are just some other examples of trees in, in the garden, really, where the growth's coming out, but it's not that super strong. So I'll just feed them and prepare them ready, ready for next year. You see that coming through there. So this is a tree that I've just kind of cleaned out last year. This is going to have the technique applied for the first time this year. So it's grown really long. I've let the lower branch grow elongate and let that grow out to get some strength. I might leave that alone just to get some strength in. But for other areas of the tree, what I'll be doing, so we can see there, hopefully that uh, we've got some of the old needles still left on and I've cleaned the branches behind them and I've let that growth come and where you can see the red lines there that's pretty much where I'll be going in and kind of cutting on branches like that and, and kind of all over the tree just to get that strength um, and that, that back budding along the tree to get that density so they'll be doing that later in June really probably about a month's time 
And as, as Peter said, you could apply this to Texas cuspid orchards. I've got a couple of uh, Japanese used cuspid orchards in my collection. They never seem to be as vigorous as the kind of English European you, the Bacarta, but I do try the technique on them and it has a help to, to kind of build some density. But this is the kind of strength I'm looking for across my trees, really, really strong growth, and then get in there and cut back. So I just wanted to show you just the last few kind of images of some of the trees and development which have been using the technique on. Again, photographs, not professional, but hopefully give you kind of a flavor of, of how things develop with the trees. So this is, uh, I'm just gonna show a quick video. This was a tree, a uh, small kind of chew, uh, chew in, less than chewing size tree um, a couple of days ago in the garden. So I just kind of recorded this. And what I, what I like about this tree is, I like the size, I'm, I'm a big fan of kind of kifu and chewing trees. So this size is great for me. But what I've been able to do over the kind of last few years, three years or so, using this technique of growth and then cut back is to get a balanced kind of growth all over the tree. So the lower branches are as strong as perhaps the upper branches as well. So you can see that growth coming through all over the tree there. And again, the foliage has come out really light. Um, I used to worry about this. I used to think, what's wrong with the tree? Is it, is it not got enough nutrients? It's just the yew kind of growing in the sun, um, and then it changes color over, over the kind of next month, ready to be cut back. But the growth there, the needle sizes are getting smaller and smaller. Um, it's getting more and more dense. And I can really make those kind of foliage pads defined later in the year once I've come back, cut back. And once we've got that budding, you'll notice on the pot there's lots of feed on there, so lots of organic feed getting into the to the soil, keeping it damp, um, and keeping that going as well. So that's really important to keep the feed going to get that growth. And then just to show you a few other trees just quickly, this was a tree I styled uh, back in 2013. So this was the raw material in a, in a polystyrene box. There's Mr. Warren there with uh, some cracking sideburns there, Peter. Fabulous sideburns there. <laughs> there we go a younger a younger self there um so this was the first styling of the tree just to get the kind of basic area and then we're going to kind of jump forward to 2018 and uh, so a couple of years ago the trees kind of got styled better the tree the branches are growing more but i'm using that technique to get that density of the uh, the branches and then these other couple of images were taken in early december last year when i joined the ukba carving workshop with will b um, that was a good session, but you can see there the density of the trees really starting to, to kind of build up and get better uh, because largely of that technique, good feeding, etc. A couple of others, and that's that's the tree now a couple of days ago in the garden. Again, really scruffy, long growth on there, but I know once the technique gets applied, uh, we'll get that, that density and that budding again coming through. So lots of good growth there. Then just a couple more trees just to have a look at. This was a piece of raw material. On the left, that was a first styling um, a couple of years ago. And what I noticed on that and then chatting with Peter was all of the branches over the tree were kind of the same thickness. The lower branches were the same as the top level branches. So really one of the design techniques was there was just to let that those lower branches grow and grow and grow. Don't touch them. Don't apply the technique, but, you know, keep the top kind of cut back. Um, and for it, really, the lower branches were as thick as kind of your, your little finger. But hopefully you can see on the May 20, just a couple of days ago, that lower branch is really thickened up. We just let it grow. You know, it was growing two, three feet um, just to get that 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 strength and to, to build that kind of sense of age with the thicker lower branches down at the bottom. So applying the technique across the rest of the tree to keep it kind of compact was good. But lower branches just just keep them growing and uh, keep them healthy. These are just a couple of others, just finally. So just some raw material uh, in the autumn. So kind of long, again, long straddly branches. But using the technique, you get back budding on there and you can start to build a tree. This was a, a, a tree of style back in March this year. So pops in a pond basket to get a bit more growth. Um, and the foliage is all coming out. It all looks as though it's kind of floppy and hanging down. But um, when I cut that back, we'll get back budding all across those bare branches to get that density. And then finally, again, just a piece of raw material. Uh, again, long branches, the same kind of issues, foliage at the ends of longer branches. So using that technique to really push the growth back, kind of a, you know aggressive feeding, fairly aggressive pruning on the strong tree. And you can really start to get that basic design and that density built up. So hope that helps. Uh, again, apologies for the photograph quality, but hopefully gives you a flavor um, of that, that technique I use just to really push back the growth um, of those healthy trees. So cool. Don't apologise for the for the quality of the photographs. Uh, it was uh, phenomenal, and uh, the results speak for themselves. Um, one of the things that uh, I have always uh, believed is that um, the uh, results speak for themselves, and um, trees never lie. That's one of the things the chief uh, taught me uh, when I was um, uh, an apprentice, and um, the. 
Sorry, I figured out why the microphone's uh, low. Uh, the one of the, the things he, t he taught me was uh, that trees never lie, uh, and you can see the res the results that Duncan has got there through um, applying a relatively simple technique, but applying it correctly. And what would you say is the the most important uh, aspect of of that? The rule for me is always the tree's got to be healthy, got to be healthy growth and and a really good solid feeding as well. That's that's for me key techniques really. So just basically getting any green is good green. Any green is good green. You need to get that on a slogan. That is on a t-shirt. That's brilliant. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, but it is. But it is. It's uh, and I learned that really is that you know you kind of always think of the the needles as as, as kind of those solar panels and they generate your growth and and it, and it really makes the tree grow. And taxes I found can be a bit bit picky when you repot them. Sometimes they yeah. can sulk a bit. But I've noticed as the trees have got strong, I've repotted some this year and they've not skipped a beat. They've just pushed out the growth and just kept on going. The engine. Once you get that engine going, that's they just keep growing really well. So, uh, I, I mean, essentially, the uh, the foliage is the is, is the engine room of of the tree, but you've uh, you can cut it back quite aggressively if there is energy within the tree. Yeah, is what you're saying. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you quite often see trees that uh, kind of get collected, um, and um, they can be cut back to hardly anything. I mean, this is one of the reasons why taxes get used for um, uh, hedging material. Would you not agree? Yeah, absolutely. They just take, you see on hedges, people just cut them right back. And I've seen taxes bud on pretty much just stumps sometimes. I wouldn't recommend it, but you do see it sometimes. They get that stored energy and they just push it out. Yeah, definitely not for, for those um, sort of uh, Yamadori collected material, but anything that kind of like gets dug up out of gardens and, and, and things like that, then um, yeah, they, they, they'll they bud all over and, and, and things like that. Uh, have you ever found an issue of having too much back budding? sometimes um and you see it sometimes um on, on trees that have been collected you know you kind of see them and they just get clusters and knuckles of the foliage gets too tight and, and you need to kind of thin that out um but generally on my on the trees that i have in my garden i've not had really a big problem so sometimes when you see on the photograph where you saw lots of back budding there's lots of um kind of little buds coming up next to each other i just kind of rub the ones i don't want off and just keep the stronger ones and just focus on those. Are there any particular ones that you tend to focus on, like uh, position on the branches and such like? Yeah, so try and um, so sometimes you will just kick out a bud that's hanging down underneath that. So I kind of focus, you know, to, to remove those. So I try and keep them alternated, keep a balance on the design and those those kind of buds that kind of stick almost to the side because sometimes you can just keep growing vertically i sometimes have a, a trouble with that on the tops of the trees where the buds will just grow ramrod straight up so trying if i can get some horizontal buds coming out and keep those and, allow, and over time those buds will start to to, to grow up and create yeah, volume. Sure. yeah absolutely um absolutely. okay what would you say then is the the one key piece of advice for people who are having difficulty with their taxes uh, oh, that's a real good question. Just to get the one piece of advice, because <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's several things really. It's about it's all the good bonsai practice. It's a, you know it's it's kind of get your trees healthy, and, and underlying underneath that is just lots of good kind of good practice, good soil, good soil, open mixture. What do you mix? What do you use? So I use a fairly open mix. I use about a fifty percent akadama, and then a mix of kiryu and pumice. Um, reg kind of keep the size the same, so there's lots of good air exchange on there. I've tried kind of using some limestone chippings. I read that that helps. I don't know. I sometimes put some of those in, um, but just a very good open mix, and then get that that, that fish uh, fish emulsion, um, the the kind of you know the the organic fertilizers in there. That seems to do the job really. Uh, and in terms of uh, pests and problems, have you ever found anything particularly an issue? No, t touch wood no i mean i'm going to say that probably the, the most pest free t uh, tree i've got in my garden and i don't have a lot of pests really you get the odd aphid coming in there people talk about the scale insect on you i don't have that the only one thing i've seen on some trees um is there but at the end of the uh the end of the kind of the particularly weights perhaps where the tree's not been in the full sun at the end there's like a gall mite that happens on the end of a tree it looks like a tiny little bud on the end of the tree you know and that opens in the, the the spring that can disfigure the needles a little bit but i just go around and pick those off yeah. and that's getting less and less but that, that's really about the only thing i get on taxes okay uh, well i get scaled quite a bit and uh, there is a video about that later on so we'll we'll cover that but yeah but um okay uh as nobody's really kind of everyone i think has just been like absolutely amazed um at your uh um 
techniques and, and the results and stuff like that. So I don't think you really um, there's any any like sort of definite questions for you. But uh, I just want to say thank you very much, Duncan, for joining us and for sharing all your uh, experience and knowledge. Because, like I said uh, in the introduction, like the results are just you know they they prove themselves, and Duncan has proven over a long long time um, that he knows what he's doing with 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 taxes. Right. And so we're going to look at some of those techniques uh, and some variations on them, uh, depending on the different trees that I've got here. Okay. Thanks a lot, Duncan. Cool. Much appreciated. Cool. Cool. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you all. All right. Well, that was okay. Uh, apologies for the for all the sound uh, issues that we've been having. Uh, see you later, Duncan. Bye. Um, uh, what had happened was uh, Windows had turned the microphone setting down. So... Um, that was what was happening. So apologies for that. Uh, I wasn't whispering deliberately. Um, so basically, what uh, you know, the, the technique that, that Duncan uh, was was talking about there is essentially uh, letting the tree grow, um, getting uh, a lot of uh, like a head of steam up with the tree, uh, allowing a lot of photosynthesis during the the, the sort of the early part of the growing season, uh, and then cutting back. Once there's a lot of energy within the tree, but you've got to generate that energy first. The way to create back buds, pretty much on the majority of species, is to have an excess of energy and then tell it where you want it to go. The idea that pinching early in the, early in the spring is going to generate back buds is completely like misguided. There is, when there's very little energy to redistribute, <clears throat> Pinching in the spring isn't going to redistribute it. You're just taking a small pot of energy and trying to spread it further and further. By allowing the, those sh those shoots and things to grow out, to have a larger photosynthetic surface area, and then cut back later on in the year when it's looking at redistributing that energy, then that's where you get all of that explosive back budding. Um, what we do here, uh, and what I do, is pretty much exactly the same sort of thing, uh, except for some more of the, the sort of the refined trees we would look at uh, a little bit more kind of like balancing of the growth um, earlier on in the in the season uh, so a couple of these trees here what we would look at doing is just looking at um, handicapping some areas of, of the strong air you know some of the, the, the stronger areas um, and, and letting some of the, the the weaker areas grow so we'll look at some of those uh, sort of individual um, examples I've uh, got one uh, tree here which um so we'll start off with we talked we looked at that uh the, the cuspidata that just been repotted um and it went it grew really really well uh it's pushing out just gonna leave it to push just let it do its own thing won't touch anything apart from just cleaning off some of those older needles that uh, uh, it's deciding to drop off what we'll look at now is um uh, a bacata which uh was repotted um and is doing really really well and so there is going to be a little bit of, uh, of balancing up. So we'll just have a look at this, this video here and I'll answer some questions. Okay, so this uh, sort of Kifu, sort of chuhin sized uh, tree was repotted this year into this uh, lovely uh, sort of old Japanese pot. Uh, it was its first repot for, uh, since uh, it's been collected. Uh, it had been growing very, very well last year. Um, I don't have any pictures from that, unfortunately, um, but it's responded very, very well. You can see this massive, long kind of extensions coming out. Uh, I just let it grow out. So we have lots and lots of adventitious buds uh, on the inside. And this um, happened because of the kind of growing out throughout the last year and then sort of cutting back technique in order to develop those buds. And now we've got them growing and forming on the inside. So what we're going to look at doing is just thinking about how to get some of those to grow out a little bit more uh, and just to balance the, um, the inner and the outer growth so that these weaker ones on the inside don't die off. Although it has been repotted, the response has been very, very good. And so we can uh, attack this very, very lightly. Okay, so not massive amounts, but just a small amount. So a weak branch like this. Okay, so this is low down on the right hand side of the tree. We want this to grow and strengthen up. This is still quite a, um, a young shoot. So there'll be no pinching done on that. This branch out towards the back here, we have got lots and lots of adventitious buds all formed and starting to grow on the inside. So what we'll do is thin some of those out so we're not getting a massive cluster. 
of growth on the inside and then look at just a small amount of tip control. So yes, we've got lots and lots of adventitious bud formation, but where we've got them growing right in the crotch of a branch in between the two, in this, this branch separation, right on that node, we don't want those to form. This one here is perfect because it is growing up and off the top of the branch, slightly set back from, that, from this branch division. So that's perfect. So we base our kind of decisions in this area around that, that bud. That one's too close. Okay, they're doing okay. All right, we'll remove that one in favor of this. Okay, so this bud here is on the opposite side. So we don't wanna to go too quickly down to our two by two structure, but equally we don't wanna to let too many buds form in, the form in the same place. So just get rid of that one. That's in the crotch of that branch division there. Just take off some of those really manky old leaves. Okay, so realistically we want these ones that are on the upper side of the branch, which are going upwards and outwards like this. Okay, we've got two basically doing the same thing here, one and two. Okay, so we'll take this one off there. Just give us a nice sort of separation between all of those buds and they can then grow out. Okay, so down here, the separation is nice enough along there. Okay, get rid of one of that one there. And then that one, which is right at the base in there. And then they'll all be able to grow out a little bit more freely. Anything that's growing off the underside can be removed just as a matter of course. So these buds are very delicate at the moment, so we have to just be very careful when we're working around them, not to knock, not, not to knock them too much. Now we need to think about what we're gonna be doing at the ends of the branches. Ultimately, we're gonna be coming in and cutting back hard here, one, two, three, sort of positions like this. So anything that's further out from, than that, it doesn't matter if there's three, four growing from the nodes, like here, because they're gonna get cut back anyway. So we only really wanna be doing that thinning out on the inner section, where we're looking to develop them as branches into our idealized branching structure. Out here, any green is good green. All we need to just look at is any sort of super strong dominant shoot, um, but we don't have any of that. Okay, so everything here is just splitting off into twos at the tip, two, 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 etc. So we don't really need to do anything there. So what we'll do is we'll let these, these sort of grow out until sort of mid to late July, and then come in and cut back hard, hard, hard and we will then see even more adventitious bud formation on the inside, and more energy going to these shoots in here. This branch still needs to thicken up a little bit, and so we'll be doing that one or two times, building up secondary branches as we go. So a lot of the thickening of that branch is gonna come from both this one or two years of extension, and then it'll come from secondary branch de uh, development and the foliage that then forms on that. Here we have a weaker branch that's coming from the inside that we definitely want to be using. That needs to grow and thicken, so no, no touching anything on that tip there. This branch that we have on this side, this is going to sort of grow out. We, we want in this to grow out and become very, very thick, almost like a second trunk type uh, image and so we're just really looking at letting any kind of extensions go on here any green is going to add thickness to that so for another couple of years we're just going to let that one grow and grow and grow we want extra uh, thickness in this branch so it becomes a big character feature and we also then get thickening of this live vein which is feeding it so they're going to get a pronounced muscular live vein developing there up in the top of the tree, this left-hand side section is getting a little bit too dominant compared to this. We want this to become our main apex. And so what we'll do is we'll just look at thinning some of this bits out and maybe pinching some of those tips on there or looking at cutting back. We need to put the brakes on this section, put the accelerator down here and on some of those bits at the, bo uh, at the, uh, at the bottom here and put the accelerator down on that section. Coming from that top section, we have this one very strong, powerful branch. 
comes out, we've got lots and lots of those adventitious buds that formed uh, last year and are now growing. Comes out, splits into one, two, three here. What we can do for certain is cut back all of those three long shoots in there. Remember, we want to just to put the break on this section here and just allow those adventitious shoots now to grow out. It's the top of the tree, so we can be a bit more aggressive. Even though it has been repotted, we're just going to make sure that we leave these shoots here to grow and develop. Okay, just be very careful not to knock any of them off. We're always looking for those ones coming off on the, the upper side. Nice separation between the buds. Remove anything from the underside. One of the problems that taxes can have is it can become too dense in the strong areas. Too many branches all coming from the one position, which is why that bud thinning out uh, is an important aspect to, to working with them. So by thinning out the buds, what we're doing is we are restricting how much it can grow, restricting how coarse those branches will become. Okay, we're going to take this long shoot off the top just to push that energy back down, push the vigor back down. Thin out this section here where we have too many buds all too close to each other. Because we want each of these buds to grow out and become a branch to put on a little bit of wood, develop into secondary tertiary branching. So now that section has been held back a little bit. We've still got some long extensions out there because we want to develop those down as branches, like so. But as the sort of secondary apex, secondary bulky section up in the top, that's now been reduced down. And what we're going to do is just let everything on this side grow and become a lot stronger. Because ultimately we want the tree to sort of come up and grow in this side. So having the apex towards the right hand side of the deadwood and the trunk and this big strong powerful branch which is going to grow up and develop into a secondary trunk almost like structure here one two three we get that movement across towards the left hand side that we're looking for so just looking at controlling those areas through the number of new shoots that we're going to allow to grow in each area at the back of my mind is the fact that it's been repotted, but equally it's recovered very well from the repot because it had so much energy from last year that we don't have to worry too much. The only concern that I have is ensuring that there will be enough reserve, enough capability to withstand any damage that may occur to the soft tender new growth. So up in these top sections, we will not be pinching out that central section just yet. We will use that apically dominant, that auxin producing shoot to grow out and grow out and grow out because we want elongation, we want extension, we want green up in the top. So we will use that for this year in that top section. Whereas on other trees, we will be looking at removing that central section in order to restrict the auxin producing sites and to get side shoots. In this case, we want that, we want to use that to grow out. Okay, so that's basically looking at uh, balancing up areas and pushing the growth to where you want it to be. The technique that Duncan was talking about and I've kind of like elaborated on a little bit there is not just letting anything grow just wildly and just, just becoming a bush again because that's what taxes want to become. Uh, it's about sort of selecting the branches looking at pushing things in uh, in terms of uh, the areas, the density that you want to, 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 to have. So the, the bit that I focused on, that sort of secondary uh, kind of like apical area, that was becoming far too dense. And if left unchecked, if left without being pruned, that's just going to get worse and worse. It's going to get, it's, it's going to start to dominate over the other areas of the tree. So there is a certain amount of just kind of like letting things grow, but they've also got to do it in a, in a kind of like an ordered way. Okay. The a couple of people have asked questions about um, the me saying about the the, the buds coming off the the, the top of the um, uh, off the branch when uh, Duncan said he, he sort of uh, he, he removed those. 
Uh, when we're looking at creating the kind of like the skeleton structure um, and looking at creating the, the branching uh, and foliage pads and such like, uh, when we have like a flat branch like this, get in, in, in the right area, when we have a flat branch like this, if we only have uh, sort of side shoots off of there, when we come to sort of bend it and move it around, uh, we don't get as much kind of, kind of like volume as we can have as if we have branches coming upwards and outwards at a 45 degree angle. Anything that grows vertically upwards is going to be very bad. Same as thing, anything that grows vertically downwards. But anything that grows upwards and outwards at a 45 degree angle, when we come to, to, to bend the branch to sort of down and put some movement in it in order to, to shorten it, create our foliage pads, which we will look at at some point in the future, then that, that, those branches which are coming off at 45 degrees there are then going to be coming off and f be able to sort of begin to form a pad with different layers sort of coming down. And so when we're looking at the the the, um, the kind of the fundamental branching structure, which we are with that tree in particular, then those kind of upwards and outwards branches there uh, shoots are very, very good. Once we then start to get into the kind of the the, the maintenance and the, the real sort of building up the density of the, the um, of the structure, then what we'll tend to see, uh, which we'll sort of see when we look at this tree uh, and this one is you get a, things start to, 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 to grow very uh, vertically upwards and things like that and so that's when we need to start thinking about trying to uh, limit the number of those shoots uh, and trying to get things that go out a little bit more sort of horizontally but that idea of that upwards and outwards at 45 degrees um, those sort of shoots uh, are very very useful for creating volume in foliage pads and that's that's why in that sort of situation there we sort of said um, they were very very good okay um, so that's kind of like looking at something which is uh, relatively um, sort of uh, young in its development. Uh, so a couple of years previous, um, that was just sort of super long and leggy and there was hardly any shoots on it um, and applied the, that sort of similar principle to, 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 to what Duncan did, just letting things grow out and grow out and grow out. I would say the one difference that I would, uh, I have sort of practiced and sort of still continue to do so is that I would perhaps not i would i would also sort of cut back a little bit later on in the year uh and so round about sort of late july early august and not expect that sort of second flush of growth because um i've always been away in in the middle of the, sort of the early part of, of june um and just like the way in which i have pre previously been operating it's been very very difficult for me to to to, to sort of do that early on in the season um and be able to sort of cope with uh, the, the the response that you get. So, like my, my techniques have been kind of slightly adapted to uh, to my own sort of situation. Um, the results will be slightly less uh, rapid, slightly less quick, but I was still getting incredible amounts of sort of back budding, but maybe only that kind of like that one flush uh, a, a year sort of thing. So. Um, if if you notice a few of the like the different timings and, and things like that, then that those that's, that's part of the, the the reason for it. Um, so that's kind of like looking at like a a, a rawish piece of material, even though it had been repotted. I, there was another. Basically, I've got two trees that are very sort of similar. Um, the brother trees, the, the the older brother to that tree, um, didn't re, re, uh, respond to the to the repotting as well. It's not done badly. It's just not going out as gangbusters as that. Uh, and so that's just basically been left untouched, uh, and that's had a bit more work done to the to the sort of the the, the branches and um, sort of thinning out uh, previously. So it, it it's in a bit of a better situation. So that one gets left untouched. This one's just been uh, dealt with a little bit. Um, so then what we're going to look at next is what we do with the the spring growth on some of the more refined trees, where we have different areas of, of vigor. Okay. Uh, and what we would do is look at just stopping some of the growth in the, in the strong areas now, um, but letting all the other areas grow. So another act of balancing. So we'll just have a look at something there. So this is a, another small size taxus, which belongs to a very good friend, colleague, supporter of mine, uh, Jose, uh, a Spanish gardener. Uh, this has been starred a couple of times, originally by uh, Taiga Urushibata, a workshop, uh, and then I restarted it ever so slightly, uh, keeping the same idea, um, but just removing a couple of branches that had been 
um, become unnecessary uh, and also just reducing the apex from across here and resource styling it and bringing it across here. Um, so we're now in a stage of looking at refinement, wanting to stop the extensions up in the top section here, but we're also looking at building up some density and back budding on these middle section and lower branches. So we will take the approach of pinching the top of the tree, not pinching the inner parts or the lower parts. So stop, go, go stronger <laughs> is the order of the day. Then these sections here that have grown out, we will then come back in, cut them later on in the year. We will then get new bud formation forming on the inside. And once we start to get that density next year, hopefully we can take the same approach of pinch, pinch and pinch. But for this year, we're going to stop the growth here, allow extensions, allow extensions. Everything's been pinched on the top now. So we've got the, the rough shape of the canopy, a few little outliers there, which will be wired down in due course. Anything that I want to grow has been left unpinched. So this branch here, for example, the tips have been left un untouched. They will continue to grow out. So they're not really extended out very much yet, but they'll be allowed to extend out. And then from this section downwards, we've just thinned it out a touch where multiple buds are coming from one point, but all of the tips have been left untouched. This is a tax that I've had for a number of years, taking it from a very raw piece of material. We're starting to get into the same situation. Uh, these lower branches just need a little bit more uh, budding to come from the inside. So there's a few coming from the inside. But we need to build up ramification here and back budding. So no pinching of the tips on these lower sections. There are some strong areas within those lower sections so we'll take out that strong central shoot there. So when we're actually pinching the buds, what we do is hold it just at the base, finger and thumb, and come in just to leave a tiny amount of the new foliage in the strong areas and other lower areas that we're looking to just stop the growth, but keep some foliage on there. We'll just take out the tip to leave a lot more of that new growth. That way we can control how much energy is being generated in each area, but also control the auxin producing sites and the hormonal activity within the branches. One of the things uh, we need to do with a, a tree that becomes very dense like this is just to comb out any of the, the growth, like this, this shoot here, which is kind of growing back on the inside um, and is getting hidden. So you see this is a completely different color to everything else because it's been on the inside, it hasn't got frosted. Uh, this needs to come out. We need to get all of that growth coming from the inside out. So always kind of like run your fingers through the, through the hair uh, and try and comb everything so it's all coming outwards. So always just look to just to encourage everything to, to come outwards, 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 outwards. The other, the other thing is becoming very dense in some of these, these areas up at the top there, where multiple shoots are growing from, from, from certain areas. And so just look to see if there's anything that could be thinned out. Um, but we don't want to be uh, obsessive about that two by two structure. What we just want to be looking for is uh, a good consistent density up in the top and looking to remove any really thick, stubby, heavy branches up in there. There aren't too many because I did that last year um, in August. Um, so we don't have too many up there, but you can see the structure of those branches. You can see the structure of those branches in there. This is starting to get very thick and heavy and stubby out towards the end. And so at some point in the future, we're gonna have to need to come in 
and remove some of those thicker, heavier bits at the end. And ultimately, a couple of four years down the line, probably come in and take that off because it's getting too thick and too woody up in the top. And then just use, put a bit of wire on uh, and replace it with other branches. So there will be a continual cycle of new shoots coming from the inside, such as that one at the base there, to replace these thicker, heavier branches. So this tree is visible from this side. It looks good from this side. The dead wood's not quite as, as interesting. Uh, and the live vein's a little bit straighter, but it's, it's perfectly acceptable uh, to look at the tree from this side. Uh, so what we'll do with the, the wiring and the styling of it is to arrange the branches so that it's visible from both sides. As I said, the, the dead wood here is a lot more interesting. Got a lot more kind of natural character. I've done nothing to this, this dead wood at all. Um, and the live vein is, has a little bit of sort of movement to it. So realistically, we want to try and, this will be the, the main front, but for the purposes of this tree, we can style it so it's visible from both. What we've been really sort of focusing over the last four or five years is getting some thickness to this uh, lower branch uh, and building up some branching structure in there. Uh, so you can see the wire scars on there from where it's been wired down and it's just been allowed to sort of grow and thicken out. Now we're getting towards a, a sort of a, an acceptable thickness there. We can start to uh, look at the finer ramifications on that. So during that time, the, the skeleton structure of the, of the apex has been uh, created. Uh, it needs some finer tweaking and some finer wiring just to bring some of these branches down and to, and to round the apex off a little bit more there, make it look a little, a little bit more mature. But there's no point doing that and doing too much fine work on, on this section when we're spending a lot of uh, two, three, four years just working on getting some thickness in this section. So we'll start to work on the ramification and the, the sort of those finer details from sort of July this year. Once we start to, to really get a lot of uh, back buds forming in there. So we'll allow this, these to grow out. We'll cut them back in July. And at that time, we'll wire and style the branches so that the new buds will be forming in the positions that we want them to be. So until that time, we're just going to be sort of treading water with the top section. Um, and then we'll give it a wire and give it a full style out. Okay, so this is a, a sort of a situation where you've got a very well uh, refined uh, apex uh, and situations, uh, you know, other, other areas of the tree that you're looking at, uh, sort of just trying to develop. Uh, and so once you've started, once you've got all of those back buds on the inside and, and, and they're, they're, they're forming there, one of the ways that you have to kind of like management, manage them is through, um, is through the, 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 the kind of the, the allow, stopping some of the tips uh, from, from growing out, which allows those ones on the inside to, to, to keep coming through. Um, if we just allow sort of continual uh, growth um, and sort of rapid expansion, then what you'll tend to find is the, the sort of the, the branch, uh, branch is becoming very, very coarse, very, very thick, um, and obviously going to need to sort of replace some of those um, once they start to become out of, out of proportion and things like that. So there's, there's always this sort of constant cycle of trying to get, um, once you've got those new buds on the inside through allowing things to go out and then cutting back later on in the year, allowing those to come from the inside by stopping early in, early on in the season, because otherwise they can, uh, you know, that they can be restricted, allowing that excessive growth can cause a bit of coarseness and things like that. So there's always this kind of like this, this balancing act between those sort of, uh, two techniques. Um, then, um, sorry, uh, I'll answer the questions when I've got time, mate. All right. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, um, so the, 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 the when you get to, to, to this sort of stage of refinement, um, then, uh, it's, you, you have to sort of, uh, sort of just, just change your way of thinking, just start to dial back a little bit on the, on, on the fertilizer and then start to apply some um, some breaks uh, a little bit earlier on in the year, okay? Um, particularly if, like me, uh, the uh, sort of the, the, that mid-season um, uh, work that, that Duncan was talking about is, is, is a little bit more sort of difficult uh, and you might not be around as much to, to sort of look after things. Um, 
so uh, what was going to sort of say about that? Uh, one of the questions was about uh, from from Steph. Uh, what was the best time to wire taxes? Um, basically, any time except for when this uh, this foliage is really sort of soft and tender uh, is is a good time. If you're going to be doing sort of big manipulations of branches and, and try, trying to bend things, then um, definitely don't be doing it in the middle of winter. Um, but if you're just doing sort of light manipulations of the branches and things like that, then pretty much any time is okay, uh, except when um, the, 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 the growth is tender because um, the uh, it's, it's very, very easy to knock off. As you sort of saw um, with the previous video, when sort of like picking things out with a, with a pair of tweezers, you can just go in and, and knock those off very easily. Um, the question about uh, the age of needles falling off the tree, it depends on on lots of different situations uh a couple of years usually and they'll, they'll, they'll be sort of dropping off uh finding the live veins on a tree um is uh there's a there's another video that we'll see about a cuspidata where that come that question gets answered which is why i hadn't answered your question before so just have a bit of patience please mate okay um so there's that uh Kind of there's the sort of the step by step um, approach to to sort of uh, how we develop the branches. So somebody sort of mentioned about um, uh, would it be possible to design a taxis with only clip and grow instead of uh, spaghetti branches, heavy wiring? Um, it's always going to be important to to, to wire um, and sort of style uh, the branches on a taxis. Okay, that's setting that um, that basic skeleton structure. Uh, but as you saw with the, the the shot from underneath here, um, and the you know the, the, the sort of Duncan's trees and, and the, the you know this taxis here, there's no spaghetti branching at all. Okay, there's no bringing branches from all over the place. It's about picking the branches out, you know, from from um, from shoots coming from the trunk uh, or you know sort of secondary shoots on on branches that you want to develop that are coming from the right place, allowing them to grow out to thicken to your sort of desired. Uh, length, thickness, etc., and then cutting back because you can cut back very, very vigorous uh, uh, taxis and get that sort of explosion of secondary growth, as sort of seen with with um, with Duncan. And then you can kind of go into that kind of like clip and grow um, type of uh, approach, which is essentially kind of like what we're trying to do with the apex um, through sort of some of the, the the really early season pinching here um, by controlling the, the the growth areas, and so. You, you do two types of um, approaches with them. There are parts of the time, part, part of, parts of the development stages where you're just letting things grow and grow and grow, cutting back, getting explosions of growth, and then other times where you're where you are kind of just just, just sort of holding things back a little bit. Okay. Right. Um, so we'll just have a look at. Uh, I did have a, another video about um, uh, scale and things like that, but we, the the time's kind of like running on, and we've got to look at one more. Um, uh, cuspidata, which is basically the, 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 the same thing. Uh, so we'll skip through one of the videos, look at the cuspidata, and then we'll go on to um, sort of pests and diseases and things like that. So this is um, uh, just a, a kind of a um, semi styling, um, uh, a kind of just nudging a tree in, in, in the right direction, taking some of those ideas that we've talked about in terms of uh, picking out the branches that you want. Um, and allowing them to grow out um, and one of the ways in which I've approached um, the, the sort of styling of taxes has particularly and other trees as well uh, is that sort of very sort of slow but not necessarily slow or it's step by step approach uh, and being a little bit sort of patient with things rather than kind of like um, looking at rushing in just using whatever branches are there taxes are a tree that you don't have to do that with like this tree here was developed from basically two shoots that came off of the trunk. That's it. There were just two tiny little shoots that came off of the trunk. There was a little bit more foliage and stuff up here, which uh, which died off. We had a couple of little shoots that came out there, and that's been developed over the last uh, eight or nine years, ten years, something like that, from those little shoots. Uh, and so, because they give you that sh um, uh, that ability and, and and the ability to sort of thicken branches relatively quickly. You can get a branch which is quite massively thick within sort of four or five years. It's it's always better to to take that kind of slightly more patient approach, getting the buds, getting the branches in those positions where you want them to be, 
growing them out rapidly, then slowing them down as you as you then sort of start to build up the the, the secondary branches and, and the ramification, because you will then have a much more structured branching as uh, as uh, <laughs> much more structured branching structure bran branches that will be uh, suitable for cultivation over a long period of time. So as they get l sort of longer and longer, you can then go in and thin things out. As we as you saw um, with the pruning of or the sort of talking about the the thinning out uh, of that core section up in the top, it will be easy for me to go in and thin out areas uh, on on the tree as they become sort of too coarse and too thick because we've got that basic fundamental sort of skeleton structure which is based on um, sort of the two by two uh, branching and which has been built from you know sort of the, the, the branches coming from exactly the right places that you want them to so here's a, a sort of a look at uh, a cuspidata uh, where that we're kind of like doing a, a second kind of approach um, at, at that uh, and as I said before, with the cuspidatas, essentially we are just dialing back a little bit on how aggressive we are, we are with them. So we can treat them pretty much the same as the bacata, but just maybe 30% more foliage, 30% more branches left on the tree, allowing them to grow out a little bit longer before cutting back and things like that, giving them a little bit more food, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, but here's the, here's the bacata. So this is uh, quite a large piece of Taxus cuspidata material. Uh, it's Yamadori, kind of, uh, from Japan. And uh, it was imported four years ago now, I think. I've had it for about that long. And uh, it's been repotted into uh, a good bonsai soil mix a long time ago, and it's, it's been doing very, very well. And so far, what we've been looking at doing with this tree is just sort of nudging it gently towards the sort of the styling uh, that I'd like to. There's been a lot of branches removed up in the top section uh, in order to start developing some branches of, with thicknesses uh, in, in areas that we want. This bottom branch here, for example, uh, I want a, a branch down in this, uh, down in this section uh, to, to give some depth and perspective. And I don't want to drop it all the way down from, from above. And so, We've been developing this branch uh, from a tiny little shoot over the last sort of four years. Still some way to go um, because it's only as about as thick as my finger. It needs to at least double that size before we start worrying about styling it. So there'll be absolutely nothing done to that branch whatsoever. Just keep all the green on it uh, as, as much as we possibly can. But up in the top where it's become very, very dense, what we can look at doing is removing some of this, some of these branches particularly where they're elongated. So for example, we have uh, a thick branch which is coming out, and this is likely to be the front, somewhere in and around here. Uh, this is growing outwards uh, and becoming quite thick, and so we wanna make sure that that branch doesn't thicken up any more than it already is. And so we'll come in and cut that off there, like so, thus reducing the amount of foliage on that one branch, uh, and also forcing or allowing also allowing the shoots on the inside here to, to grow a little bit more. But really what we're most sort of concerned about is the, the thickness of these branches that we're gonna to want to use uh, and wire up soon. So this neighboring branch here, this is still a little bit on the thin side. Okay, we want it to be you know, the same sort of relative thickness as this one. Uh, and so there's nothing that we will do to, to this one at the moment. We have adventitious bud formation in there. We can cut this back at any time and start to build up a secondary branching structure, but we want that extra little bit of thickness in there. So I'll just go through and I'll look for branches that are very weak on the inside, that are being shaded out. Some of the, some things like this. Okay, get rid of those. Look for super vigorous shoots like this one uh, and see if I can remove older branches around it uh, to favor the, the youthful branch. And just look at reducing some of the mass up on the top where appropriate in order to balance up the top section uh, and the bottom section a little bit more. So what I'm doing 
is I'm looking at the branching structure and imagining my idealized branching structure where things come out, split off into two, into two, into two, and the thick, relative sort of thicknesses of them, uh, and trying to make sure that the branches are developing in that idealized fashion. So we have the two branches here, for example, the one on the inside, which is growing a little bit more upwards, as opposed to the one which is growing sort of being forced downwards a little bit here. This one's clearly getting a little bit too strong. Got a lot more sort of branching uh, and foliage around that. So we'll just put a little bit of a break on that one by cutting off the strongest, most auxin producing dominant shoot there. And then that will keep those two branches in check. And so they're gonna come out and, and split off into two sort of very similar looking uh, branches in terms of thickness. And also then length when, when we're looking at the length. By cutting off some of the things on the ends, it's going to encourage shoots on the inside to grow out a little bit more, particularly if we give them a little bit more light and airflow. So up at the top we have this very thick branch, thick long branch here, where there is a nicely uh, thickening up, a nice sort of medium thickness uh, side branch here. If we look at some of the neighbouring branches around it, uh, this one here for example, that one's of the same thickness as that medium branch, a lot of the other branches kind of like up in the apex are of that sort of type of thickness. So really it's just this thick one here, which is kind of like out of keeping with a lot of the other branches. Uh, so this was, this was previously a lot bigger. This was cut back hard a couple of years ago, uh, which enabled this medium thickness branch to grow and thicken up a little. So you can see where it was cut back previously. And so now we're gonna continue that cutting back process uh, to make this the new leader of that section. So quite a bit's been pruned off the tree, you can see. But we are pushing the tree in the right direction and really building up that sort of skeleton branching structure. Whereas previously it was all just a big mess of lots and lots of branches coming from in there. We're starting to get down to a nicer, more uh, organized structure there's still a few too many branches in there uh, and we're starting to develop those branches down the bottom here for example that we want them to, to grow out and become thicker uh, and a similar type of structure here like you can see here where it sort of comes out splits off into two so we're building up that sort of um, idealized branching structure that's going to be a lot easier to, to work with uh, these thinner branches these younger branches are going to be very, very easy to, to wire and to manipulate and to get into the positions where we want them to so it's easier to, to, to work with those branches than really thick, heavy old ones, try and bend them. One of the other reasons for allowing things to, to, to kind of sit and grow and uh, grow rapidly for a couple of years and then cut back uh, is relationships with the live veins. And so at the moment we've got this big thick trunk, which is pretty much all live vein, um, all down this section, uh, even continues down into here uh, to, to the edge of like the roots in there despite the fact there's a lot of dead wood above it and so by letting things grow it allow, enables the the live veins to swell um, to become um, sort of muscular and to become sort of pronounced so we can see here this live vein which was previously sort of coming down here and sort of split around these areas the bottom section is dried out and desiccated because of um, branches being cut off at the end whereas the one above has started to swell and, and uh, become more pronounced. And so once we get in there and start to carve, we can sort of see the edge of the live vein going up around there and, and up into the top where there's a couple of branches. That will give us two sort of very pronounced live veins sort of coming down here. So we could potentially make a little bit of a deadwood feature in there to split those two uh, and to create some interesting features there. And then also might give us the option of taking this live vein down and sort of going, going across. But we can only sort of see that once it starts to be pronounced and we know where, where the live vein is. So that's another reason for letting things grow out quite a lot before cutting them back. So it'll be another couple of years of this type of semi un, unrestricted growth. Um, just making sure that we, we balance the top and those bottom branches getting the thickness that we want in those sections. So really sort of considering how the, those branches are going relative to the thickness of the ones up in the top. Because obviously the ones in the top are going to thicken up quicker 
And so we just want to balance things out by making sure we uh, have similar amounts of foliage in, in, in all areas. Uh, but this is going to go back outside. It's going to be fed well, watered well, and left to grow for the rest of the year. Okay, so again, that's just sort of reinforcing the, the, the kind of like the important point about that sort of branch selection um, and deciding where you're going to want things to grow. Okay, so we didn't look at any kind of like tip um, uh, sort of uh, treatment there. So there was nothing to be done uh, with the pinching of tips or anything like that at all. We're just letting things grow uh, freely uh, with that tree. Uh, but we, what we would look, definitely be looking at doing is that sort of deciding on uh, exactly where the branches uh, are going to go and thicken up. So those lower branches that you saw on there uh, at the back, they were just tiny little shoots uh, three or four years ago. A lot of those medium strength uh, branches, which um, which we're sort of now cut, cutting back to and looking at developing out, they were just tiny little shoots three or four years ago. That first pruning that was done a couple of years back really allowed those to, 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 to go on from tiny little shoots to start, to start developing into, into, into much more kind of like uh, usable branches. And so I, I decided exactly where I wanted, you know, to, to sort of build those blocks of foliage in terms of uh, looking to uh, create um, foliage pads that were going to highlight the, the the most important kind of character features of the trunk and the deadwood. Okay, I wanted to have some branches down at the back to, to give some uh, uh, some depth and perspective because all of the branches were coming uh, very much from the from the middle and the, the top of the tree. And then looking at how we can then start to build up um, a real sort of basic um, structure of branches that were going to be of the, the correct sort of thickness and vigor as well and so it's that sort of branch selection process um, is, is a very important part of, of, of taxis development and that's the same whether it's a 150 200 year old uh, sort of tree um, a, a, a yamadori piece of material or if it's something like this all of those trees were like this at one point in their in their existence all of those trees had a period where the tree was like this. If you've got a piece of like starter material like this, you've got to decide exactly kind of which branches you're going to want to grow out, what sort of styling you're going to want to give it to. So this is just the you know completely bolt straight up, right? All the branches going off in all these different directions, and I've got to decide um, exactly what I'm going to do with that. Decide which branches I want to grow out to what thickness. Exactly the same as with the 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 the, um, the more kind of like uh, elaborate uh, Yamadori trees. Okay, and then just focus the energy of the tree in those areas to give that to, to give the tree some character. I've got to decide with this if I want it to be big, small, tall, cascade, or whatever. That's what we've got to sort of do from an early, early period. And deciding where those branches are is very easy with taxes. It's difficult with pine. Okay, you can't get pine to bud off the trunk. Okay, it's difficult to get pine to bud off the off the uh, to, to, to get junipers to bud from the trunk. Maples, a lot of the deciduous trees, yes, it you know it's a lot easier. Okay, but for for some of the other conifers, it's really difficult to, to sort of do that without you without resorting to, to to grafting techniques. But with the taxus, you can see all of these buds coming off of the trunk. We could cut all of this off and just work with one tiny little shoot, grow that out, no problem at all. Okay, and we can keep working on it, working on it, working on it. Okay, so you've got to get in, really make those decisions, think, okay, I'm going to grow this branch out until it's pencil thickness, I'm, I'm going to have it this long, I'm going to do all of this kind of stuff. There are very kind of creative um, uh, species to work with, even with quite kind of like uh, basic and simple material. Over a couple of years, you can get great results. You, you, you make some decisions like that, put the tree in the ground, let it grow, let it thicken up. Within five to ten years, you're going to have something worth working on. Okay, so definitely a species that should be explored uh, a lot more but the key to success the absolute fundamental key to success as you saw with uh, with the, the trees that Duncan have worked on uh, and some of the trees that we've got here is that management of the foliage you've got to have lots and lots of good green foliage in order to be able to cut it back really hard there's got to have plenty of energy in there and it's got to have been allowed to grow out okay and then you're sort of looking at cutting back at the right times one of the things we haven't yet sort of talked about and this is much more applicable to people in hotter climates is the importance of the uh, the soft sort of tender foliage um, and having um, some some of those growth tips uh, in the hottest part of the summer. Taxus are a tree which they will withstand high temperatures as long as they have those kind of like um, 
slightly more youthful tips uh, at, at the end. If you put, if you cut back um, uh, the taxes really hard in, in in hot weather and put it out in the in the boiling hot sun, you're going to suffer quite a lot. Okay, so Duncan's technique where he's doing it in June, he's still got time before we really hit that sort of that peak of the of, of the, the temperatures in sort of uh, in July and, uh, and August. And plus we're in the UK, we don't really get that that sort of hot temperatures. Um, but if you were doing that kind of that, that technique in a much hotter environment, then you would definitely need to be looking at um, sort of shading them, uh, shading those trees off from temperatures that are getting above uh, 30 degrees C. Okay, because if they don't have that, those sort of soft green tips when you when you start getting above 30 degrees C, into the you know the the mid to high 90s, taxes will burn. Right, so it's very very important to have that foliage there, both for photosynthesis and the the, the cooling effect. Okay, so if there is anybody watching, uh, and 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 sort of looking at those techniques and what we're sort of talking about and trying to apply it in a in a hot environment, then like we have to um, adapt our techniques that we see uh you know people in spain california uh japan doing then you might you might have to sort of rethink how you how you're doing it because that soft tender foliage is very very important for uh for, for hot uh, environments um but other than that it's it's, it's all about the, the 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 kind of um the uh the management of those tips do you let them grow cut back later on in the year do we uh do we look at balancing things up now how do we get the, the, the that growth to, to, to go where we want it to? But it's all about getting the growth. If they if they're allowed to grow, if they if they if they if they're pushing through, then you can do so much with them. You can develop branches really quickly. You can get them to grow exactly how you want them to, um, as long as you understand that balance between aesthetics, our aesthetic desires, uh, and, and the tree wanting to grow. Okay. The one thing uh, we sort of uh, mentioned but skipped over is some of the pests and diseases. Now, taxis are a relatively um, easy uh, species to, to grow. Duncan said he only really has problems with, um, he, he doesn't have any issues with scale. Uh, the only thing he really has issues with uh, the gall uh, mites at the, at the end of the growth. So, yeah, I'm the opposite, don't have any issues with those, but um, have a, a quite a problem with scale. Um, uh, and if, for those of you that don't know, uh, what uh, taxa scale looks like um, it looks like this uh, it's a it's a real pain it's a soft it, it's a you know it's a sap sucking insect uh, which tends to to grow on the underside of the uh, to, to grow tends to, to develop on the underside of your foliage um, generally sort of towards the end of the of the branches but it will also sort of be on some of the uh, the, the inner stuff as well and uh, these little sort of brown shells um, and what you need to do is just go along and physically remove them. Uh, and so you should start looking for those um, around about three or four weeks ago. They start to become uh, apparent and start to move around um, and just go in and start to remove it. If they've been allowed to develop uh, for more than, say, like a month, month and a half, then they'll, you'll start to see a weakening of the foliage, you know, sort of foliage going discolored, um, branches potentially not growing out as, as well as they could do. Um, but physical removal is the, is the absolute best thing to do. Uh, scale are very difficult to kill with um, with insecticide unless you have um, some very very toxic chemicals uh, which can break down the proteins in the scale in the outer shell and things like that. So just going through physically removing them is is a, a very um, rewarding process uh, and and the best way to sort of stay on top of it. If you're having sort of real persistent problems with them um, year after year after year. Uh, then you know, sort of lime sulfuring them over the winter is is one of the ways to to, to sort of go forward. Um, other than that, we've kind of uh, sort of briefly sort of looked at um, the repotting and things like that. The basically the best sort of time to repot them is once the buds are starting to swell. Uh, once they've started to open and really sort of push out, then it's it's probably a little bit too late. One of the questions was about that. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so it's you know sort of just sort of springtime, just as the buds are really sort of going, is 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 generally the best time. Uh, and as Duncan mentioned, a soil mixture that is um, fairly free free uh, aerated. Okay, so what we don't want to do is use uh, anything that's kind of like very compost based. Okay, there's and there's a, a very good reason for that. Um, but one of the things that the taxes do like is. Uh, they're like a, a good amount of moisture, but they don't want to be uh, completely waterlogged. Okay, so the more you water them, 
uh, the more they grow. Um, but if the if the, the, the water sits in the pot for, for too long, then they, the, the roots will suffer. The roots are really quite fleshy. Uh, and so it's the, the only thing that we that we do have to worry about is once like with them uh, over the winter is sort of temperatures that drop really sort of below um, minus five, minus 10 for prolonged periods of time. Okay, uh, other than that, you know, like the tops of the tree are absolutely kind of like, you know, no problem at all. Um, but the roots are a little bit sort of tender. Um, and when repotting uh, as well, um, they do have a tendency to, to sort of tear very easily if, um, if, you, if you're aggressive with them. Um, so you just have to be a little bit um, kind of uh, delicate with, it, with the roots as well. Um, but one of the main reasons for not sort of planting them in compost is that because of those roots being so fleshy, they are a, um, a haven. They're, they're delicious treats uh, for vine weevil uh, grubs. And so any th like any taxus that has had um, uh, that is sort of planted in that type of, of, of um, soil uh, mixture invariably will end up with um, with, with uh, vine weevil problems. Uh, you can notice the the sort of the damage on the leaves um, sort of being eaten uh, around about this time of year. So if you're if you're seeing any kind of damage on the leaves, uh, them being nibbled away at edges and things like that, then it could be a, a vine weevil issue. Um, if you're noticing a real lack of vigor in the tree, uh, then uh, do have a look in the soil, um, particularly if you've got that kind of very poor um, kind of like composty type mixture. Other than that. Taxes are generally pretty, um, uh, pretty robust trees that you don't need to, to, to worry too much about them, which is one of the reasons why I like them. Um, so other than that, I think um, we kind of uh, covered a lot of the, the questions there. There's some stuff about deadwood carving. Uh, what time of the year do I do my deadwood carving when I get some free time, which is never. So... Um, that's that's i'm sorry steve that's the only answer i can give uh you can pretty much if you're just carving dead wood you can pretty much do it any time of year if you're carving into live wood then you don't want to be doing it right in the in in, in the sort of uh, hottest part of the year and kind of like potentially um damaging the uh the, sort of the water caper uh, water carrying capability of, of the live veins and things like that so other than that pretty much um uh, you know, if you're just carving deadwood any time really um, so. uh, question from Nane are the things you look for in material that young to guide those decisions or just enforce your design of vision so uh, for something like this uh, then you just got to come up with a plan because it's this is a cutting um, which was uh, taken and, and grown uh, to be used for, potentially for um, root grafting um, and so they do take uh, as cuttings relatively uh, easily um, uh, and so I had a, I've got one tree which isn't for live streamers and stuff like that it's uh, which I potentially needed some, some root grafts for and I might still do uh, and so this is um, kind of like being used for that but Yes, you just have to come up with a plan. Uh, we'll do something along those lines of working with real basic material, uh, things like this, and kind of coming up with, a, with an idea. And this is where a lot of kind of beginners, a lot of people uh, really do struggle because they're kind of like looking for character in a, in a tree like this, which has no character. So uh, working with, um, you know, sort of collected trees is a lot easier from that aspect because there's, there's already a lot of character there. Okay, so... That's probably about as much as um, as we're going to cover tonight because um, we've been going for a while and we've got quite a lot of people watching. So hello to all 244 of you. Um, and um, uh, these all, like I say, um, thanks for all the questions. If I didn't answer any of them uh, and if you are a donor, uh, then and you are as part of the, the, the new Discord uh, community then please ask there please get in contact with me that way for those of you who don't know what we're talking about basically these streams are um, they're, they're free of charge on, on YouTube uh, they will be monetized later so I can get a little bit of advertising revenue even though I kind of like hate that but uh, as somebody said I'm putting a lot of time and effort into this so um, and so what we've been asking people to do is to if they've been finding of use um, to, to, to donate to uh, 
to the cause and keep us going and you know just say thank you for, for all the effort and everything uh and so if you do feel that way uh we are working on a um uh uh web shop and a, a payment um portal uh through that um but uh we're not quite there yet uh and so uh there is a a, a donation link in there so you can go through that and um uh, and, and sort of give some money and those people who have donated to the cause um the those sort of the benefits are we do a like a q a session every now and again uh and there's also we've just set up this uh discord community um where it's kind of like a big group chat uh type forum type situations where um a lot of people can kind of like share knowledge uh you can ask questions and they can answer them uh and so if you do donate then you get to be part of the of the, the sariama club um <laughs> Other than that, uh, we're going to do another stream. Uh, from next week, things might change a little bit because um, uh, my wife's maternity leave ends uh, tomorrow. Uh, she has to go back to working from home. Uh, I'm on full-time daddy daycare. Uh, and so I'm not sure if how, you know, how we're going to sort of work around it. But um, we are going to be doing something on defoliation of maple. So a lot of people are kind of getting towards that problem, uh, that work at the moment. Uh, and so um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to look at um, yeah, the, the defoliation or partial defoliation of maples, what we do with those uh, either on Wednesday or on Sunday. So uh, stay tuned to uh, social media, subscribe to the channel, all of that jazz. Um, and we'll see you next time. Uh, the only other thing to say is that um, the stream has been brought to you in association once again. Uh, with Timothy Taylor's landlord, uh, a cracking pint of, of Yorkshire beer, uh, and uh, I'm going to enjoy this and smash the computer for messing up the sound at the start. So um, many thanks, uh, and.